Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In these videos, we're gonna be going through some food styling tutorials, and today we're talking all about pastry. So I'm gonna be sharing my go-to pastry recipe that I use every single time I have to style pastry. The recipe is available in my book, which I'll link down below, but I'm also gonna be sharing it with you in this video. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So first off, we're gonna make the pastry. The recipe for this pastry is from my book, which I'll link below, but I'm also gonna write out the recipe in the description box for you. You're gonna add 250 grams of all-purpose flour, or you can use 125 grams of all-purpose flour and 125 grams of wholemeal flour. This is gonna give your pastry a nice deep color, and it's what I do most of the time. Next is one teaspoon of caster sugar, which you can leave out if you're making a savory pastry, and half a teaspoon of salt. So you wanna add 125 grams of cold, unsalted butter to a food processor. It's really important that this is really cold. That's what's gonna help you get that nice crumbly pastry. Then go ahead and blitz this for a little while until you've got a sort of sandy breadcrumb mixture. Then add one egg and mix again until it's just starting to become combined. And then with your food processor running on a low speed, you wanna add around 30 to 40 milliliters of really ice cold water. I suggest adding this really slowly and stopping once your pastry starts to come together. You don't wanna make it too wet and you may not need all of that water. Then turn the pastry out onto your kitchen side Give it a really rough shape into a disc. You don't want to overwork it or warm it up too much with your hands. Then wrap it up in cling film and pop it into the fridge for at least four hours, but preferably overnight. So the first kind of pastry that we are going to style is a crimped tart crust. So this is great for something like an open top pie, like a lemon meringue pie, pumpkin pie, that kind of thing. So you want to start with using the right type of tin. So I've got this really nice white ceramic one and it's got quite dramatic fluted edges and this is going to make it really easy for us to get that nice crimped shape. So take your pastry out of the fridge, unwrap it and give it just a couple of minutes or so to come up to room temperature just a little bit. We don't want it to get warm, um, but it is a bit easier to work with if it's not completely fridge cold. Then you're gonna roll it out. I like to use these pastry rolling guides. So these are basically three different guides at different thicknesses, which you can put either side of your pastry to rest your rolling pin on so that you get a really even roll the whole way through your round. You don't wanna have areas of it that are thick and areas of it that are thin, and these just help you keep everything even. So once you've rolled it out into a circle, go ahead and lay it into your tin and gently guide it into the middle so that it is nice and flat all the way along the bottom. The next thing that I do for a crimped crust is to cut around the edges, leaving about an inch or two overlap on the outside. And what we're gonna do is fold that under towards the edge of the pie. So essentially the outside edge is doubled up and tucked under the side of the tin. And this is gonna give you a really nice rounded top to your crust. Once you've done that, you wanna start going around and pinching the edges of the crust into those fluted edges between your thumb and two fingers. Now, don't be afraid to give this quite a good pinch because that's gonna help you to get a really nice defined shape. Your pastry is gonna puff up a little bit as you cook it, so having it a little bit more angular at this point is great. Once you've gone all the way around, pop your pastry back into the fridge for about another 30 minutes to an hour. It can also be longer if you wanna make this earlier. And then when you're ready to bake it, pull it out, prick the bottom all the way along with a fork just to let any trapped air out as it cooks. And then brush your pastry with some egg wash. To make an egg wash, you wanna mix one egg with a little bit of water and just brush that all the way around the top of your pastry crust. And that is gonna give you a really nice, deep, golden, shiny top, which is perfect for taking photos. If you're blind baking your pastry crust, then fill it with some baking beans on some greaseproof paper. This is gonna keep that bottom nice and flat. And then cook it as per your recipe. 
When it's done, you're gonna have the perfect crimped pie crust. It should slide right out of your tin and you're ready to photograph it. Next up, we have a full top pie crust. So you're gonna start in the same way as the crimped edge by taking your pastry out of the fridge and rolling it out with your guides. For this one, we're gonna be rolling out two pieces of pastry, one for the crust and one for the top. So we're gonna do the same thing, lay it into that tin, making sure that it's nice and even all the way along the bottom. And then this time you also wanna cut around the outside, but leaving just a little bit less than you did with the crimped crust. Now go ahead and do exactly the same thing to roll out your second piece of pastry, which is gonna become our pie top. Once that's ready, you want to add your pie filling to the bottom of your tin. Don't overfill it because it tends to bubble up and out a little bit and a little bit of that can look nice, but if it's too much, it can really easily start to look messy. With your pie top, either cut a few slits in the top or you can use a small cookie cutter to cut out a little shape. And this is gonna help air to escape to avoid your pastry top cracking as the filling bubbles up and creates heat inside your pie. Brush a little bit of egg wash around the edge of the pie base before you lay the top on and this is going to help them stick together. Then you want to cut around your pie top as well to create a little bit of an edge which you're then going to fold over and underneath in the same way that we did for the crimped crust. This is going to give the edge of your pie top a really nice smooth edge and a nice base. If you want to you can leave it just like that or you can also go ahead and go around making a similar crimped shape that we did with the crimped pie crust using your two fingers and a thumb to press that into a nice shape. Then add your egg wash to the whole top of your pie to make sure that everything gets a really nice golden shiny look. And if you want to, I like to do this for sweet pies, is to sprinkle a little bit of really coarse demerara sugar on top. Not only is it delicious, but it also adds a really nice texture and golden crunch to the top, which just looks amazing. Pop your pie into the oven to bake. And if during the baking process, you find that it's getting a little too brown, you can add a bit of tin foil to the edges of the pie to stop those edges catching. Last up, we have a lattice pie top. So this is probably the most decorative of the three that we're gonna do. And it looks amazing for pies where you really wanna show off the filling, but you still want that sort of pie top look. So again, same as the other two pies, we're gonna roll out our pastry, also two portions, one for the base and one for our lattice strips. So line the bottom of the tin with your single piece of pastry and this time you wanna cut around the edge so it's even with the top of the dish. So you wanna leave just enough at the top for your lattice strips to stick to, but you don't wanna have any overhang. Then add your pie filling and set this aside while you sort out the strips. So once you've got your second piece of pastry rolled out nice and even, take a crimped pastry cutter. This can also be a pasta cutter, but I like one that has quite a dramatic zigzag because as the pastry cooks and it puffs up a little bit, you can still see the pattern. If it's not quite dramatic enough, sometimes that pattern can get lost. So to cut even strips, I actually use my silicon pastry guide to run the cutter along to make sure that every strip is the same width. This is really key in making sure that the top of your lattice pie looks neat and intentional rather than too rustic. Although of course, if you're going for a rustic look, you can absolutely skip this, but I find for food photography, taking that bit of extra time to make your strips really even pays off. So next, brush around the edges of your pie base, and this is gonna help your lattice strips to stick to the edge so that when the pie is cooking, they don't pop off. So you wanna lay each strip all the way across your pie in one direction, and then pull back every other strip to the base. And you'll see how I kind of fold them back on each other so that that filling doesn't go on the top of the strips. And then one by one, you wanna lay a strip across in the opposite direction, then put the strips back that you folded back and then pull back the 
opposite strips. So if on the first time you pull back strips one, three, five, and seven, once you've put them back after laying your first strip, you're gonna pull back two, four, and six. And then repeat this process all across your pie and you're gonna have a really nice, neat woven look. Once that's done, gently press the pieces down to stick to the base and then use a really sharp knife to cut all the way around the edge so that those pieces are nice and even. Then brush everything again with your egg wash and again, if you want to, add the demerara sugar. I think this adds a really nice look and you're ready to bake your pie. So there you have it, that is my favorite pastry recipe for food styling. I use this as my go-to whenever I need pastry for a shoot. You can find the recipe in my book, which is linked down below, and also I've listed out the recipe down there as well. If you wanna see more full behind the scenes videos, then do hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.